How's it going, guys? This is Brando with Prospect Select. First of all, we would like to thank you guys for working with us as a PS Scout. We're excited to have you guys on board. This video is going to walk you through what to expect as a scout for PS. So here is a brief list of what exactly you will be doing as a PS Scout. Essentially, you're set up right behind home plate with all the equipment we provide, making sure your field is running smoothly while scorekeeping and scouting. If you run into any issues, you're going to reach out to your site director who will be available to assist you. Just keep in mind, we do expect you guys to be problem solvers, so only reach out for assistance if you cannot resolve the issue on your own. This slide is a list of what is expected of you and what you should be prioritizing throughout the event. The list is pretty self-explanatory. Just remember the more organization and preparation you do going into the event will dictate how smooth of a weekend you have as a PS Scout. How's it going guys? My name is Brando. I'm gonna run you guys through a quick tutorial on how to be a successful scout for Prospect Select this summer. First day, you're gonna walk up to the field um, an hour and 45 minutes before your first game. All of the equipment that you're gonna be using is gonna be stored in some, some kind of closet um, at the facility that you're using. Um, first thing you're going to do is find that with your site director and bring it out to your field. You're going to have a table, a chair, a tent, along with a radar bag full of equipment. Alright guys, so the first thing you're going to want to break out and get set up is your tent. Um, usually there's going to be two people to help you do this, but just in the event of one person setting it up, I'm just going to run you guys through quickly how to set it up efficiently. So, first thing you're going to do is obviously take this tent out of the case, so you're going to get this part done here. Kind of scrunch it down. Take the cover off. Kind of fold up the cover as neatly as you can. I put it under our tablecloth. No one can see it. Okay, we're going to unfold the tent as far as we can unspread it. Okay. All right, guys. So as you can see behind me, we have the tent set up. Um, after you pull it out of the tent cover, you're going to want to basically get every leg extended. So each leg will have a kind of like a, a notch that you have to get it into. And then at the top, there's like a thing that you pull that you can push up that locks it in. So in short, each you're going to go around to the tent and each leg you're going to first extend the bottom part and then lock in the top half. Like I said, someone will be there to help you do this but this is how you do it if you're by yourself all right guys now I'm just gonna run through how to get your uh, scouting tools uh, set up and ready to go for a game so as you can see behind me we have all of our equipment that comes out of your radar bag here each radar bag is gonna have a label it appears as a dog tag on the side of the bag so that's how you know what radar bag you have so firstly, we're just gonna go ahead and spread out the tripod. Go ahead and get it down like that. Um, I always like to have this piece here, this piece that basically opens the clip of the tripod pointing out to the field so I can easily clip the gun in. You'll see what I'm saying right here. So we're gonna put the tripod here. Clip is facing out, okay, we're gonna clip it out put the gun in, fits nice and flush, and then we're gonna clip it back in and the gun's nice and sturdy. It's not gonna come out of there. So your gun's ready to go, okay? Secondly, just we're just gonna keep hitting on the gun here. How to properly charge your radar gun. Okay, these are really expensive guns. Don't just plug the thing in and, and treat it like, like it's a piece of garbage because it will break and they're very expensive. So. You're gonna have a radar charger and you're just gonna to wanna to see, it's like a square type shape and it needs to fit properly into the radar gun. There's about nine prongs inside that you have to get in, okay? So we're gonna insert it here and then we're gonna screw these two screws in, okay? Once those are screwed in and it's firm in here, that means the gun will be charging. As so on top of the uh, radar gun charger, you're also going to have a micro USB charger, which is going to charge your hotspot and your portable charger for your phone. Okay, you're also going to have an iPhone slash iPad charger, which is going to charge your iPad, as you can see here, 
along with your phone, which you will be utilizing to tweet and also as a backup kind of tool to game change as well. So super important to just always have these and always have something charging. As you can see here, I have a hotspot. So for those of you who don't know what a hotspot is, it's essentially it's portable Wi-Fi and you guys will have access to that during the tournament. Um, on the front of each hotspot, it will have the login information. So you're just gonna treat this just like you treat any other Wi-Fi. You turn this on, it pops up, and you connect to the Wi-Fi with the credentials on the front. Pretty simple and straightforward. In the event that for some reason your gun isn't charging from the actual radar gun charger, we have a portable battery packs that essentially charge the rechargeable batteries and you can place them in the gun okay so you can fit four batteries in here so you're gonna have two of these and you're gonna have the ability to charge eight batteries at one time and you can fit six in the gun okay as you can see when I take this bottom clip off the gun I don't know if you can see this it shows you how to put the batteries in okay it shows you positive negative positive negative so there's no way to mess that up all right guys just to wrap up just going to send you guys off with some uh useful stuff to keep in mind um as you you know approach working for uh, prospect select so all this equipment guys it works great but it needs to be charged so always always try to be charging this stuff whether it's in between games during games the night in between days of the tournament um mornings of whenever you have the opportunity to charge something just go ahead and charge it because as soon as stuff starts dying it just be it's kind of like a trick trickle down effect just more issues arise so always charge okay secondly this area this whole scouting area we want you guys to keep this as clean and organized as possible um, it's super important okay we have college scouts walking around sometimes as many as 300 college scouts walking around a complex um, so we don't want this to look bad we want this to look organized and professional. Also, there's parents that are paying for the event that would like to kind of have something that's uh, aesthetically pleasing. So, all right guys, so lastly, there are four major apps that we need you to download on your personal phone that you're gonna be using during the event before the tournament actually starts. Um, so, first we got GroupMe, which allows you to communicate with everyone. Tourney Machine is gonna show you a schedule of the event and be able to basically point people in the right direction as far as where games are. Um, Game Changer, you're gonna be basically have on your phone as a backup to the iPad, okay? So if for some reason the iPad dies, you got Game Changer on your phone. And lastly, Weather Bug. That allows you to monitor the weather, um, which plays right into our lightning rule of seven miles. Um, we have to pull them off the field. So Weather Bug is good for monitoring weather. So those are the four that you have to download before um, you work any Prospect Select event as a scout. Um, okay, all right guys, so that's kind of the day one tutorial um, along with some other you know, tidbits of information on how to be a successful scout for Prospect Select. Any questions or concerns, feel free to shoot me an email at my email below or my phone number. Um, and we'll get back to you guys as soon as we can before the event. So. Once again, thank you guys, and we look forward to having you guys working for Prospect Select. How's it going, guys? This is the quick uh, Game Changer instructional video for scouts that are working for Prospect Select. So the first thing you're going to want to do is sign in to Game Changer. So you click sign in, and your email is depicted by your radar bag number. So if your number is 2, if your radar bag number is 2, you're going to sign in with Game Changer two at ps dash baseball dot com so if you're number seven your login would be game changer seven at ps dash baseball if it was 10 it'd be game changer 10 so just goes by your number uh your password is pbc 2731 so sign in All right, guys, once you're all signed in, this page right here is the list of games for this tournament. Um, as you can see, we're looking at Palm Beach Classic 2019. So just for an example, just to 
kind of show you guys and for people that are following along, we're gonna do a sample game. So we're gonna go ahead and click Panther Baseball 18U versus Primal 9 2020 right here. So we're gonna click that, we're gonna download the game. Once you download it, it usually it goes to the top. But you just gotta click it again here and click resume scoring. And we're gonna start scoring a new version for sample purposes. So start scoring new version. Primal 9 is home. So while we're doing this, we're gonna look at the lineups and we're gonna uh, import lineups. So this happens after you go up to each coach and get a physical copy of the lineup. So on the bottom, you can see the two jersey icons. Uh, we're gonna be working with Primal 9 2020. So you're looking at the lineup from the coach right here. So you click roster. Okay, so let's say T. Durland is hitting first, playing shortstop. So we're gonna click him, we're gonna activate him, which means he's active in the game, and we're gonna select his position, which is shortstop, okay? That's pretty easy. Now let's say D. Moya is hitting second, playing right field. We're gonna activate him, and he's playing right field. Boom. So now if you click back on lineup, it shows you who you've entered. So it's relatively simple. Um, the trickiest part of entering a lineup to Game Changer is the DH and the pitcher. So the easiest way to do this is you enter the pitcher where the DH is hitting. So if we have C. Avery, who is pitching, and G. Werner, who is DHing, we're going to click. D. Avery is hitting third. We're going to activate him as the pitcher. And then as we activate him, set DH pops up. We're going to click that. And we're gonna go ahead and click Whitaker. Now, boom, it shows you the three players you've entered to the lineup and it has C. Avery pitching. So that's how you do the DH. All right, now this is a quick example of what to do once the game starts. Um, everything in Game Changer is pretty, pretty self-explanatory and pretty simple, but just a couple of quick tips for you guys. So obviously, for when the pitch is thrown, you're gonna click pitch, um, and we're just gonna say it was a ball. Next pitch, we could say it was a strike. Next pitch, we could say it was a foul ball, so on and so forth. So we'll do a ball and play. Um, we'll do a line drive, and it was a single to right field. So that's how you enter a hit, obviously. Um, you know, if, say, Alfonso goes to steal, we're gonna hold down on Alfonso, and we can drag him wherever. So we can drag him to second, first, third, and you just gotta write, basically register in whether he was safe or out. So we're gonna take him to second and say he stole second on a stolen base. Boom. That's how you kind of move runners from base to base. Um, substitutes, say we wanted to substitute T. Durland, we're just gonna go ahead and click his name, and we're gonna go ahead and put in G. Roberts for Durland. So now Roberts is in for him. That's the same for pitchers and everything else. Um, that's kind of the two trickiest things as far as in-game action on Game Changer. Um, real quick, when you go to finalize a game, always make sure that you click game over in red because that, that finalizes the game and if you click exit current game, that just saves the game. It doesn't actually submit the game. So when, you're, when a game's over, make sure you're clicking game over in red. Boom. You can skip and finalize uh, as far as the blown saves and winning pitchers go, and then just click exit game, and you're done. That's how you score a game. These next two slides will show how to properly chart and submit a pitcher velocity during a PS event. This slide shows a properly filled out velocity sheet with three pitchers as examples. As you can see the columns here, we have the first and last name, graduation year, travel team, and then fastball, curveball, slider, change up velocity, along with arm slot. Do your absolute best to fill all those in. The next slide is a video that covers how to enter the pitch revealo into our website. There's no sound to this video, but it's very simple. So follow along and if you have any questions, feel free to ask your site director during the event or reach out to Brando. My number will be posted at the end of this video.
All right, guys, Twitter is our main platform when it comes to scouting. So once you're set up and comfortable with scorekeeping, you're going to want to log into our Twitter account and start firing off some tweets on top prospects you see throughout the day. On this slide, you'll see the format that must be used for every tweet. Be sure to look over the important tips as well. We try to only put high quality videos on the feed, so please follow those guidelines as closely as possible. This slide here shows you guys what a finished tweet should look like. Just be sure you adjust the hashtags to your specific event and always use hashtag the best play here. This slide basically covers what apps you need to download before the event begins. Um, Game Changer for scoring, Tourney Machine for scheduling information, Weather Bug is used to track lightning and weather that's rolling in, Twitter for scouting and tweeting, obviously, and GroupMe for communication and staying in contact with the rest of the PS staff during the event. This slide covers some important things to keep in mind throughout the event. Always approach coaches with a positive attitude to receive a copy of their lineup to put in a Game Changer. Make sure you're always charging equipment the night before or during any downtime you may have throughout the day. Good rule of thumb to keep in mind is to always have something plugged in, whether that's the iPad, radar gun, hotspot, portable charger. Always arrive on time. Day one, you're going to arrive to your field one hour and 45 minutes before your first game. After day one, you're going to arrive one hour and 30 minutes before your first game. Always communicate with coaches and umpires on information like weather, mercy rule, and time limit. Always checking to make sure the umpire has enough balls. The last thing you want to do is have an umpire run out of baseballs in the middle of a game. Each game will start with six baseballs. Since this is a national level event, conflicts do arise during intense games, so do your best to be as helpful as possible and remain neutral. Do not pick sides, just get some help from your site director and handle it accordingly. This slide goes over what you guys are going to be responsible for throughout the event. You will be handling some expensive equipment, an iPad, an iPad charger, radar gun and a radar charger, Wi-Fi hotspot, micro USB charger, a portable phone charger, a tripod for your radar gun, and portable battery charging packs these are the items that you're going to be responsible for um like we said they are expensive so just do your best to handle them with care and treat them as if they were yours all right guys this last slide is going to touch on a couple uh helpful tidbits to keep in mind throughout the event constantly charge uh your stuff we touched on that earlier obviously but always try to charge something communicate with your site director as often as you can just keep them updated um, teams can bat 11, so they can have an extra hitter, a designated hitter, and then another hitter, which is known as the XH, which is the second extra hitter, but it's written as XH. So teams can bat 11. Mercy rule is 12 runs after three innings, 10 after four, and eight after five. Um, if you say that a couple times to yourself, I guarantee you're going to remember it after, after day one. So 12 after 3, 10 after 4, 8 after 5. Weather rule, pull teams once lightning is within 7 miles. So this is when weather bug comes into play. Um, you're going to be checking weather bug if it doesn't look too good outside. And if lightning is within 7, you're going to pull the teams off the field. Time limit, 2-hour time limit in pool play. You will have a scout information sheet that will get more in-depth on a time limit. That way you can refer to it in person when a situation arises. Record high quality videos to be shared on social media. That just goes into putting out quality tweets. And lastly, return equipment bags looking the same as when they were given to you. This is super important, guys, because this these uh these equipment bags have some really nice stuff in them and it's a lot of money. So treat them nicely and just try to get them back to us as uh as nicely as you guys can.